What's up guys, welcome to a new episode of Filmmaking Friday. Today we're going to talk all about how to compose a shot. Filmmaking Friday. Welcome back, today we're going to dive into the world of composition, the rule of thirds for middle and background. So. Let's dive right in. First, let's quickly go over what we mean with shot composition. It's the arrangement of different visual elements in your frame, and it's one of the key ways to guide the viewer's attention, tell a story, create a specific mood, and also a cinematic image. The first thing that probably pops into your mind when you hear the word composition is probably the rule of thirds or the golden ratio. Now, the rule of thirds basically uses four lines, two horizontally and two vertically, to divide your frame into nine individual squares. To always have a good composition, basically put your main subjects or elements or objects either on one of these lines or the meeting points of the lines right here. Now, this will automatically come to your mind once you start filming a lot. If you're not quite sure at the beginning where to put your subject, you can also turn on these guide frames for the rule of thirds in most cameras. Of course, you can also opt for symmetry, but using the rule of thirds will probably almost always guarantee you a cinematic, well-composed image, especially in the beginning. When shooting a subject and you already put it into your rule of thirds grid, also consider headroom. Leave enough headroom because a cut-off head doesn't look good, but also don't leave too much headspace because that also will look weird. Try finding the right amount of headspace so your subject will not look enclosed, but also not lost in the image. Next, consider looking room. This means always leave more room in the direction they're looking than behind your subject. One more thing to take into consideration when composing your shot are leading lines. Leading lines can be everything from a street, corners of a room, to basically everything that appears as lines in your image. These can be used to direct the eyes of the viewer into a certain direction. And once you master all of these things, consider rules are there to be broken. While a talking person framed like this usually is the correct standard choice, you can switch it up like this, no looking room to, for example, let the viewer know something is off. Give them, for example, a lot of headspace to make them seem small or make the leading lines not lead to anything. The subject might be somewhere else entirely. To achieve a well-composed shot, you also need to think about three areas in your frame. The foreground, middle ground and background. Each of these layers serves a different purpose in your composition and helps create a sense of depth and dimension. Let's start with the foreground, which is the area closest to the camera. Foreground elements can be used to create a sense of depth by leading the eye into the shot. You can also use objects in the foreground to frame the subject, adding a layer of visual interest. It can make a person look enclosed and trapped, or if you're on a long zoom lens, make it seem like a person is being watched. Next up is the middle ground. You usually have your main subject of the shot right here. It's me. I'm the main subject. This is the focal point of your composition. The middle ground is where you usually direct the viewer's attention. This is where your main action or subject should usually be, whether it's a person, an object, or any point of interest in your scene. You can use leading lines, color contrast, or lighting in the middle ground to guide the viewer's eye directly to the subject. This helps to reinforce the importance of the main element and keep the audience focused on the story. Finally, we have the background. This is the furthest away from the camera, but also plays an important role in your scene. The background provides context for the shot, giving the audience information about setting, location or environment. It helps to place the subject within a larger world and can add storytelling elements without distracting from the main subject. Use the background to establish where the action is taking place, whether it's in a city, a forest or an interior space. The details in the background can enrich the story. A contrasting background can help your subject stand out more. If the background is darker, a well-lit subject will pop out and vice versa. You can also use depth of field to separate your subject from your background. While plain white walls as a background are very boring and not cinematic at all, if that's what you're striving for, also avoid making them too busy or distracting. An overly cluttered background can pull attention from the main subject. Now that we've covered each layer, let's talk about how we bring them all together to create a well-balanced dynamic shot. Think of your composition as a three-layer cake. By having distinct elements in the foreground, middle ground and background, you can create a sense of depth that makes the image feel more three-dimensional and engaging. For example, try not to shoot against a flat wall, always try to create depth in your image like in a hallway or try to separate your subject from the background. Use elements in the foreground like roads, railings or rivers to create leading lines that guide the viewer's eye towards the main subject in the middle ground. These lines can continue in the background, creating a path for the viewer's gaze to follow. Adjusting the focus between the foreground, middle ground and background can change the story you're telling with the shot. For example, a shallow depth of field can blur the background to make the subject stand out more, while a deep focus can keep everything in sharp detail to emphasize the overall scene. Use elements like doorways, windows or natural objects 
objects to frame your subjects within the shot. This technique can draw attention to the subject to create a more intimate or contained feel. Or for example, in this shot, I used a foreground element and a shifting of the focus to kind of discreetly show how she enters the bathtub. Now some tips for improving your composition. Don't just settle for the first angle you try. Move around and see how shifting your position affects the composition. Sometimes a slight change can make a big difference. One more tip, especially in the beginning, use a prime lens. Zoom in makes it easy and while it can give you a variety of different focal lengths, using a prime lens forces you to move around the scene move your camera and really think about the composition in your image. And that's already it for today's episode. I really hope you found it informative and useful. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. And also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes of this series. Next week, we're going to talk all about the different camera angles. So, see you next time.